All right, good evening, folks, for another edition of Silverback Talks. Tonight, we got with us two of the founders of the VAL, Virginia Arm Wrestling League. Number one, left-hand, right-hand, 242 in State Virginia, Joshua Harding. And number five, left-hand, number seven, right-hand, Mr. Daniel Swords II. Uh, welcome, fellas. Happy to have you all. Appreciate y'all. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. Um, first of all, I just want to, you know, I've introduced to y'all. I just wanted to get to tell the folks how I really got met up with y'all, I guess, through um, uh, Vince, you know, met up at the, I went to the barn the first time a couple, I guess that had been two years at the first event at the barn. And then uh, what well, had been last year about this time. And then we were in War of the Mountain One together, at West Virginia. And then um, had the pleasure of being part of Concord, the, actually the round robin ranking with y'all and conquest and looking forward to war and uh wanted to have y'all on here really talk about the VAL and everything that's going great with it so um once again thank y'all for joining us I guess the first question I want to start with was um what was the driver to really get started the VAL uh Dan you got it I mean, you really sure. spearheaded everything sure yeah so uh, I would say the main drive I got into the to the game, and so I'm I'm, in it, I'm two years in it now as far as tournament com, com, competitive tournaments. Um, it was like you know I start going to Stan's house and we start pulling and everything, and I'm like, so who's number one in the state? You know, I, after finding out there's not really any rankings here, you know, it's kind of just like. He says, she says kind of thing, you know, like, oh, you know, this guy's number one, this guy's number two. Um, and seeing that other states are, you know, getting uh, uh, organized and all that and there have been organized, it just kind of seemed like one of the things to grab by the horns, especially uh, since there was no really organization here. So, yeah. um, so it just gave me motivation to kind of like, you know, by default, Josh had to be involved, you know, because he was the only other one really other than the sit down tournament doing anything. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that was kind of the, the main, main deal, you know, like grab it by the horns and make some, you know, create something for us, man. And something we can all enjoy and, and get the rankings and get us on the map. We got too many yeah. good pullers here in Virginia that nobody knows about. So that's another thing about it, you know, we want to get these guys on the map. Guys like Josh, guys like, you know, CJ Twine, you know, yeah. um, guys like Dion, you know, who are coming out of nowhere. And, right. Uh, yeah. We'll probably touch base on him again later in the show. <laughs> exactly. So, Monster. yeah. So that's kind of the, the background of it. And, uh, and then we, we did the ranking tournament and uh, started off back in November. So, and, um, Josh, you got anything to add to it, bud? Um, no, I, at the time when Dan approached me with the VAL idea, I had done, I helped out with sit downs. I probably did that for like two years in a row. And then I started doing comps with uh, Matt McDougal at the barn. And just my, I guess my knowledge from doing all the tournaments was really easy to just apply to all the VAL stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, and I will say each event y'all had so far um, has been smooth, really smooth. And you, you've suffered from a really great problem where you've outgrown your venue quickly. Oh yeah, um, that and just, and just shout out to Matt McDougal too in the barn for uh, allowing y'all to get started there uh, the last couple of years. And you know, phenomenal hosts, uh, events have went well, uh, smooth. Everybody's been great, well behaved. It's just um, truly. Truly been really has been a pleasure, but yeah, you're a victim of a really good problem, you know. So um, that's awesome. You know, you mentioned Stan and um, um, McDougal, but you know, one, one thing I've noticed, you know, I've had the pleasure of getting started really refing with y'all. You know, y'all have been a, a big help for me to get. Um, uh, hey, Lucky, Lucky, chiming in, um, uh, really getting us started, uh, getting me started on my referee and. But y'all got a huge supporting cast. You know, y'all got a lot of bodies floating around there helping. It's not even necessarily our pullers. You know, I see a lot of non-pullers helping y'all yeah. out. 
whether it's kids or family members, talk a little bit about that. Um, just not only like your core team, mention them, please, but my day, everybody that I see helping out. You want to, okay. So I've got yeah. a couple of my boys that help out. Um, my buddy, Jason, he helps out with the live stream. You know, everybody in my friend group, immediate friend group knows like we've, they've all been on the table at least once, but a lot of them are willing to help out and stick around. Uh, I know Dan's family helps with promo videos and shirts, oh, son, all sorts son of stuff. Is sick. His son oh, sick. Oh, yeah. Sick with the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Ty does a good job. And we got, we got a lot of support. You know, we got, you know, my buddy Big Mike and just, just the crew to kind of put things together um, for Ward. Jo Job Swords is coming down. He'll, uh, he'll be helping out with uh, setting things up. And, yeah, we got – we got good support, man. Some some good guys who uh, are willing to help us out and get this thing going. Yeah, you know you got um Wayne, Wayne with Wayne. Wayne. Wayne does a phenomenal job sure. on the mic. Absolutely. Um, Wayne's a who too. Wayne's a lot like me. He has no problem making fun of himself. I like that. You know what I mean? So uh, you know, it's makes it a lot easier when you get let down. If you go ahead, and just put yourself down first. I found that. <laughs> But um, yeah. Wayne's a hoot on the mic, and then, like I said, I just see a ton of a ton of supporting cast. You all have consistent referees, the standaways being there, Stan being there. You know, you have a lot of consistency, and that that helps with having a tight group like that to uh, keep y'all afloat. Yeah, uh, so you, you you'll see Steve Walker at this next one as well. Chris so Wood chiming in. Speaking of supporting cast, Chris Wood, Voodoo chiming in, Voodoo. Yeah. Big, big so, VAL ref supporter for y'all. So, um, um, what's going on, Chris? So, Walker's so Walker's gonna be down helping with wars. Ever heard you say, Dan? Yep, he'll be down. Nice, and uh, yeah, we got we, uh, Chris Tiller as well. He's he's uh, another ref. Yeah, Tiller did a great job. I had the pleasure of uh, being across the table from him, um, at Conquest. Yep. Yeah, so had a real pleasure there. So one thing I want to, you know, I think I've told y'all this in our private group too. You know, North Carolina just redid their rankings and they decided to place. But I, I really, I mean, just pick people in rankings to get started. I really liked what VAL did. I really, because then it was very um, objective. There was no opinion. Your your performance in that round robin got you started and um what was the you know um, go ahead and talk about the concept behind the round robin and why you decided to do that versus simply pick five pick ten and just drop their names in there well i guess i really wanted to see i wanted to bring everybody i've been to like practices like harrisonburg like uh nova practices norfolk practices just like i wanted to bring everybody together in one spot and I guess tournaments, running the tournaments, I noticed it would only give me like maybe one through four. It's like, uh, that's not going to be enough for ranking. So yeah, yeah. go ahead and do a round robin. That'll give us, that'll give me, you know, with some pull offs, uh, one through however many competitors we had in the class. So I was hoping to bring like everybody out. And that's kind of what happened. Yeah, a lot of dudes that showed up. And what, I know y'all probably came right off the top of your head. I do remember us discussing this though. But how many total entries did we have in the round robin? We had at least ten in every weight class, except for supers, right? Was it ten in every weight class but supers? Yeah, I know my class was only like six. Well, uh, Two twenty and one ninety eight had ten. I know that. Let's see. I've got it right here. So, in your class. The 199-220 was 11. The 198s was 13. Mine and Supers was 5. 176 was 7. And 154s was 9. So we almost filled up all the classes up to 10 almost. That's a really good start. And you've had we've had people trickle. You know, there was folks that couldn't make the tournament. Uh, I've had... I've had... One challenge defense, and then I challenged Matei to go into 198. So, but you know, both of them were there at the round robin, Marshall and Matei. But you've had people that shown up since that wasn't in that round robin. It's going to come. Uh, I mean, for instance, we talked about Dion. Dion went to round robin. 
Mm -hmm. That changes everything in in that weight class with him there. You know, it changes everything. Um, But the, I I really thought that was a a really good uh, concept. And then followed it by free tournament. Come on, you can't beat that. You know what I mean? You can't beat the free tournament afterwards. So, um, very awesome event uh, for everyone, I believe. So let's get so let's get into conquest. Conquest was a hit, obviously. Uh, God, there were so many people, so yes. many people packed to the brim. I questioned the refs in one particular super match, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, I felt felt uh, you know it may involve two people that's on this podcast, <laughs> but <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, all seriousness, so phenomenal, great super matches. I thought me and Dan had a great match. Um, the yep. Stan and John had a match, it was a good match. There was, I think, there was about five super matches to kick Conquest off, roughly five. There was, yeah, Jason White and uh, Jordan, uh, yep. correct, I believe Jason Wright, Jason Wright, right, Jason Wright, yeah. and Jordan. Uh, but anyways, there was a, a great kicked off, great with some super matches, and then a huge tournament. and my God, the people that came around. Um, we don't talk about that, Chris. <laughs> What's this? Did, did Josh choose the national anthem at the sit down? <laughs> okay, whatever you do, never play the Jimi Hendrix version of the national anthem. <laughs> uh, I did not realize he was protesting the national anthem, and he oh. completely <laughs> ruined it. And uh, it was uh, a bad time. Yeah, as well. <laughs> Didn't have any Wi-Fi, so I had to use what was on my computer, and it was not the right stuff. So, <laughs> I've never shut off a national anthem early. That was uh, the exception. Uh, Voodoo de- derailed us on that. Um, back, back, back to the conquest. A uh, hell of a super match to start in a tournament. My God, I wish we knew how many states were represented. I know because I know of guys that came down from PA, mm-hmm. Jersey. Oh hi! Did some of your boys come down from Ohio, Dan? Was any of your family from Ohio down? Yeah, not for that one. Yeah, um, but I know South Carolina came up. Obviously, North Carolina, West West Virginia, West Virginia. Yep. I mean, what a huge turnout! And the names that showed up, some absolute studs came in. Um, I mean, start off with Doug Woody and Adam Hoing, uh, mm-hmm. Nick Johnson. Um, Bryce Meadows had a great showing. Oh, yeah. um, the uh, Dion showed up. So th- let me let's talk. We've mentioned Dion a couple times. Let me get a couple things straight. Team Brutals made up of two different teams. Well, in in Virginia, two different in Virginia. Is that right? I think there's three different chapters. So you have Richmond, uh, like the <laughs> Newport News, Chesapeake area, and then uh, Nova has a chapter. And y'all are the, the Richmond, Richmond chapter. Yeah. And Shannon and his crew, Jason mm-hmm. and all them come out of the, the uh, northern the other chapter. Uh, yeah, south. the south, Team Brutal South. Okay, Team Brutal South. So Dion is with Shannon and him, to my understanding. Right. right? Yes. So that's a stud crew coming out of there. Oh, yeah. All of them are They nice. built that thing up nice. Um, that is a That's a great crew. Uh, and they show great support by them traveling to y'all's events too. Mm-hmm. By the way, that's awesome of them. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the conquest it, you know had that whole crew. Alec Guth came down from PA, ran away with the seventy sixes. Um, I don't know if anybody slowed him down all day. I've got him in the one seventy six round robin in May, and um, I'm expecting him to finish well in that against all those stuff. Oh yeah, but. Um, the uh, you know, we had a you know, now we've had a couple that's going for the great American bash out of the VAL. I know myself, you are Josh, right? yeah, I'm going, yeah. Um, Jamie James is, you know, I think he's gonna go 54. Mm-hmm. Jason Wright, uh, who'd you say, Jason Wright? Jason Wright is going too for 220, I'm guessing. I no. think so, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that'd be a good time too. Really support. We need to make sure everybody wears their jerseys for it. <laughs> but um, so you know, I touched base on the barn. Let's talk about the you know, and I do want to recognize uh, Matt McDougal and everybody tied to the barn and their hospitality with the events so far. Not just for, since it's been VAL, but even prior to VAL being awesome. But the um, and for y'all in that area, if you want to check out an old school, I say old school, but a 
uh, strongman gym, as how I refer to it, where you got atlas balls and kegs laying around. That's the gym to go to, y'all. It's, uh, it's We don't have anything like that around here where I'm at. Uh, there's, I don't know that there's an atlas ball in uh, upper North Carolina. I'm going to be honest. Um, but it's uh, it's it's a very unique gym, and I recommend anybody that's truly just wanting to get bigger and stronger. I maybe wouldn't go there for cardio. If you try to go there and get bigger and stronger, that's the spot to go to. For sure. Um, but let's talk about the new venue. I know nothing about it, so y'all going to have to s- s- spell everything out on this. I don't know anything about the new venue. Go ahead, Dan. All right, so it's uh, it's called the Great American Ranch, and it's uh, down there in Mechanicsville, which is just uh, just east of Richmond, kind of northeast of Richmond. Um, it's a uh, it's a sweet, it's a perfect spot for arm wrestling. It's going to be a perfect venue. Um, kind of looks like like it's out of Texas or something. You walk in there, and it looks totally different from the outside. We got a big, uh, I think it seats two hundred and eighty. Oh, hold on. In the in the saloon part is where we'll be having an event at. Yeah. Um, booths all all the way around. There's two bars. There'll be you know there's food. Obviously, it's a restaurant. Looks like good food. I've never ate there. Um, and then there's a stage with a huge American flag in the backdrop. Um, and then there's also another room, like an arcade room. And then you got the the main part of the restaurant. And there's like a there's one of the mechanical bulls up in there and. Yes, yeah. looks like a pretty sweet spot, and uh, perfect. I mean, when we walked in there and did our little um, tour of the place, we posted the video. I mean, our faces said it all. Yeah, it's, I think it's. I think it's just a perfect match. Yeah, whose face said it all, Dan? In particular, whose face? <laughs> whose mouth oh, dropped? Yeah. Face said it all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a good, uh, what a crazy good venue. Ever- Never delete that picture. Never, <laughs> never delete that picture. <laughs> but yeah, you, you talked about the video, and I, I couldn't remember if it was Wayne or if it was one of y'all that shared the video. And um, I, I was impressed by it. It looked like a ton of room, um, and that's that's really what you need. You know, y'all have been lucky at the barn. There's a restaurant right next door, mm-hmm. at least during daytime hours. And there's a couple spots right down the street. But I'm guessing they probably serve there. Is is that what I think think Wayne told me that when we was talking about it? Yeah, they got food and drinks. Yeah, yeah. Wayne was telling me all about it at Conquest and really hyping it up, had me excited about it. So I mean, that's uh, that's awesome. Like I said, what a great problem to have. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, you know, it sets up well for a for like a an announcer, an MC like Wayne, being able to be a a, a little bit have his own area to move around and talk and stuff like that. So. Um, that's awesome. Very, very happy for you. Um, the, so let's, I know you've told about, y'all already posted all your dates for the year. We've got war coming up on May 25th. What is following war, um, on the schedule after that? I don't know if you got the dates in front of you, if you know off the top of your head or not. Yeah. we got attrition August 24th. And then we got chaos to be i think that's november that seventh let's see here yeah we it was during the american bash so we had to move it we did a yep. poll to move it yeah it would have been no, november 9th november 9th yep yeah so let's talk a little bit about the names i know dan you you educated me on it uh, when you first came out with all of them, and with you know the names kind of lead to the badass promo flyers and shirts and everything you're putting together. Uh, talk about the names of the of uh, your events and where where that stems from. Yeah, so uh, you know, me and Josh were talking like um, this is back probably before the the ranking tournament, mm-hmm. and just trying to figure out going ahead and scheduling the whole year in advance, and we're like thinking how many tournaments and. We kind of landed at four tournaments, like one every quarter kind of deal. And uh, and uh, it kind of came to me. I was like, oh, I want to do something cool and kind of apocalyptic, you know. And um, four horsemen just came to mind. And uh, so that's basically what what each event is. You know, we got Conquest, the white horse. Then you got War, which is the red horse. Attrition, the black horse. And then Chaos, 
slash death, which is the uh, the pale horse. Yeah. So um, that's the uh, that's the kind of the, the theme. Yeah. No, I think. Uh, so. yeah. yeah, I think so. When you just tell me all about it, I thought it was just dope. You know what I mean? I was like, yes, sir. Like, kind of wish I would have thought of that before Dan, but you know. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and so yeah. that's with the images of the yeah. shirts and everything. You know, we just kind of keep keep each theme to each each event, and um, you know, this this event we got our shirts coming. You know, it's got it's got the red horse on the back of it and all that. So, I know Jamie's having a good time uh, doing all the designs. I think he's he's really holding himself at a, a high standard because he something like that. You, you do expect it when you're when you're. Your event name is called War. It needs to be badass. Don't come. As, don't come, Don't put out something soft looking. You know what I mean? And, and you know, he was talking oh, yeah. to him about it. And when y'all were put piecing it together, he wasn't ever giving me no previews of it. But he was like, "Man, he's like, I can't, I can't get it just right." He's like, "I'm trying, I'm trying to get it just right." He's like, "It's gonna be badass when I finish it, though." But um, you know, I think it seems like Jamie Jamie Vaughn with J Visual Graphics does a lot of work for me, a lot of work for this podcast, and it seems like he's doing a great job with y'all too with the promos and the flyers and whatnot for sure yeah yeah he's a uh, great to work with um and i think uh, you know preach it to the choir on this but he he won't stop until he gets gives you exactly what you're looking for yeah but, good good dude yeah so i'll step away from val for a second kind of just talk about you two because uh, you know you're both hell of a promoters and you know care about really spreading the sport but you know let's talk about you know y'all's individual a performance i'll start with dan um you know dan you and i had a match at conquest and you you're you're already jumping two spots each challenge wanting to keep moving up and it's extremely uh respectable and admirable and you've got your next um um challenges against uh, jr i cannot say pronounce jr's last name one y'all will have to um call Hilton. Yeah, Hilton, Hilton, okay but what he goes by his middle name is what i can't pronounce so carney Carnus or something? Carnus or something like that, yeah. Uh, yeah. But J.R. Hilton. So um, what, what do you expect in there, Dan? Um, you, so if best I can tell, J.R. is an insider, and you are a top roller. Classic hooker, top roller matchup is what I'm seeing there. He's got a strong bicep, but, you know, I thought that was my strength as well. So you've shown you can do well against strong bicep. And Jason White as well, good bicep. So you've shown yeah. you, can, you can beat strength. So what, how are you feeling about J.R.? Yeah, Jr. Strong dude. Same same thing. Like you said, strong bicep. He's kind of got that king's move, you know, where he holds out there. And uh, I pulled him. I pulled him once. At the Winchester, um, East versus West, and then of course reporting the rankings. So we're we're one and one versus each other right now. So um, yeah, hit, hit hard and fast. Is got the game you. Plan. You hit fast and can't, don't give him time to get in the Kings move, right? You hit yeah, fast and, enough. And I just need to heal up. I need to stop arm wrestling some because. Yeah, you just talking to me a little bit about, you, about your, eight, your aches you've been having and everything with it. But you say it's been getting a lot better here in the last couple months, right? wonder what that's from. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt better. <laughs> the downs, like my arm. That's, that's the first time I've felt pretty good in a long time. And then uh, my left Felt a little banged up from sit downs, and then uh, me and Big Mike pulled a little bit last night. Oh my and goodness angle gracious! Oh, uh, smart genius. He's a genius. Then, today on a job site. Oh uh, no! Carpenter on one, on one of my crews, and uh, yeah, I was feeling pretty pretty good on my left. It would so. suck to work for Dan or work with Dan, and you're just trying to have a lunch, and he's already pulled the tailgate. Down. He's like, let's go. <laughs> see, Dan, Dan, see this, it applies to like the VAL stuff. So Dan is go, 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 go VAL stuff. But he's the same way with the arm wrestling training. <laughs> so I'm trying to get him to pump the brakes a little bit there. Can't. Yeah, it's, it's help. They yell at me. They, they yell at me. Him and Big Mike both. So. Months ago, Dan told me, he's like, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to come away from the table a little bit and do more lifting, but then every time I talk to him, he's on the table all the time and never lifting. <laughs> but yeah. I'm like, working? 
I mean, hell, it's working. I'm not knocking it. It's working. It's <laughs> tough. No, but they're right. There's something about just resting and not doing nothing, just blood flow. Um, I, I, I'm, I ain't young. You know, I'm almost yeah. 40 years old, so I think the healing takes a little longer than than I think in my mind, really. You know, yeah. like, I feel like I'm 16. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. So. <laughs> Well, you um, you 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 started the rankings at ninth at one ninety eight, right? Yeah. So you went nine to seven, and now you're going for five. You defended your uh, seven against me, and well, we should have. I missed weight, but that was that was the plan to defend it there. Um, and then you are uh, now going after five, dude. I think hell of a job. Like seriously, commend you on the um, just being ambitious and aggressive too, jumping on it fast, not waiting around. I think. Appreciate it. And way I can. I'm, I'm in this weight class. So I can kind of speak on it. I think the the bottom seven or so, we're kind of right here in this group where we're really going to fight each other off. And then once you get in that top few, it really yeah. kind of separates the men from the boys right there in the top few in our weight class. Oh, yeah. Um, Devin is I – th- I mean, I think you know, Devin's holding down the 198 right now, but I, I, mean, I, I think you're a tough matchup for Devin. I'm going to be honest. I think style right. is – um, it, it's going. It's going to take me a while. That's that's a pretty big gap to close. It is. There. It is. But, but um, Devin Devin uh, did well at the East versus West. I think his only loss was to Bo Bo Horner. Okay. Yeah, what? I saw that. What? <laughs> Damn, he's <laughs> Bo's Bo's watching. Bo's an avid yeah. uh, follower. Gets on all the time. Um, so I don't awesome. recognize, but I talked to Bo about daily. He's a uh, been giving me supporters for an upcoming match I've got next weekend. But um Josh, being the number one guy, dude, you you just gotta sit and wait, man. Ain't nothing you can yeah. do unless you start jumping around in weight classes or jumping around to a maybe looking out for someone in another state. But as the number one guy on both hands, it's kinda I don't know. Uh CJ's returns got me a little nervous. Uh depending on what class he decides to pick. Uh yeah, so CJ. What is- What's he walk around at? What does CJ walk around? Uh, if you ask him, three hundred pounds. Okay. Uh, no, he won't give me a straight answer, so that's why I'm nervous. That's funny. He um. So I, I got to see the sit down clip of him and Jacob Green. Um, you know, Jacob was just ecstatic for competing with him as well as he did, and um, unfortunately, I think CJ fouled fouled out. Yeah. Um, I can't remember if they pulled once or twice, but I think CJ fouled out. But yeah. um. They you know, Jacob, that twice, I think. Jacob catching him just was a that was a win in Jacob's book. You know what I mean? He, he took that as a win. Um, so did uh, I, I've never sat down at a table before um, to pull. So it's something I'm in, I'm interested in trying. It's I've heard it's you know favors someone like me. It's a lot of upper body. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's um I'm I'm, I'm ex- interested in definitely trying it. Uh, to see what it's about, but so uh, did both of y'all pull at sit downs last weekend? Uh, no, I don't pull because I suck at sit downs. <laughs> so I just, I just help run it. It's a, I'm a lot more useful that way. <laughs> but Dan, you pulled. I think I saw a clip of you pulling. I think I yeah. saw. Yeah, yeah, I pulled. Yeah, uh, one ninety eight. Was that the weight class there? Yeah, one ninety eight, one ninety eight, and then one ninety nine plus. Yeah, I heard it was a crazy, a huge open. Yeah, huge... yeah. The classes have always uh, so. This is my third sit downs. So third sit downs in a two year span. Um, as far as I know, the classes have always been like that. It's like a big. Um, well, the pro class. I think there's a two twenty class. Yeah, the two... pro class is four classes, with yeah. the highest class being one ninety nine plus. Yeah. Yeah, when Jacob told me he was going, he told me about you know I think he was walking around like two thirty something. He's like, yeah, I'm in open. I was like, the hell's the weight class in open? And I heard, I went and read it. I was like, geez. Yeah. Like, That's a huge class. And then I saw John pulling Steve. I was like, good God. <laughs> yeah. I think somebody said Steve came in about 340. I was like, uh, good gosh. That's just, a, mm-hmm. I think he, he took first, right? Didn't Steve take first? Yeah. I think yeah. he might have taken first both hands, maybe. I'm not sure. Let's see what we got here. Um, uh, Damien says sit downs are for people with actual strong arms. That's why I didn't go. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> um, I saw Yost chimed in, uh, was on earlier too. So, you know, we're, you know, we was talking about Yost today early in the group because uh, Yost is in the talk, in some talks with some North Carolina rankings right now. And um, phenomenal puller. And we was talking about the support cast for VAO. How about the camera work Yost does for y'all guys too, man? Um, he doesn't mind getting in there. He really enjoys it too. Uh, he's one of those selfless contributors to the community that he don't care about getting a dang thing out of. He just truly – and he told me he hates competing. He said he hates competing. He likes to practice, likes the sport, but absolutely hates competing. But is a hell of a competitor. I mean, Jason Yost is a stud, man. He's sleeping. He's got the sleeper build. Oh, Don't yeah. Don't sleep on that guy. Yeah, he'll come in, act like he doesn't want to be there. You know, act like he's just sitting over there or whatever. And then he absolutely ran through the 242 plus round robin. Um I hosted and just, uh, you know, I started, I had to reconsider why did I invite this guy? You know, like, like, like he should bro. Why is he pulling? You know, <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, I've, I've pulled him a handful of times in tournaments. When I saw you had him when, when he was on that 242 thing, I'm you like, said dude, that. yes, you I said caught that. it, bro. I'm like, these guys don't know, dude. Yeah. Jason's a monster, man. You, you said that. And I've never had the pleasure of pulling with Jason, but I pulled with several people and I pulled with Cole Blankenship. And on paper, I was like, man, Cole, ain't nobody beating Cole this whole tournament. I was like, Cole, Cole's going to run through it. And Cole finished third. Um, but it's a, it, was a, it was a hell of an event. But, yeah, Jason ran away with it. You know, I'm not going to say that put his name on the map. But I thought he did what? Didn't he do well at sit-downs last weekend, too? He made yeah, it took, took first. First yeah. place. Yeah. So he, he will be pros next year. So I, I took second. Um so now, now I have a chance next year. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's uh, he's 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 definitely one of those guys that's coming up fast, um, and quietly, like you said, he's a sleeper. He's coming up fast and quietly. Um, I can't remember him really losing much at all. So, I really, I don't see it much. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I, I do want to take, we're coming towards, you know, towards the end of the show, and there's a couple more areas I want to touch base on. Before we get to the last, the very last topic, which I always like to end on, I want to take a time to recognize y'all sponsors. I saw the back of the new shirt. Uh, great job with getting some some sponsorships from different areas, different companies and everything. Take take the time to mention each one of those, please, because um, they deserve the recognition. Yeah, I can start it off. So we got um, BMW Builders. We got better floors. Um, all these are local local companies out of Richmond. Um, we also got SRS Distribution Building Products. Um, another company I, I do a lot of work with them. Um, we got we got the Barn Gym on there. They they're on there by default because they they were in there they were with us in the beginning. So yeah, we're we're always going to support them. Um, Wolf building products um I do, I do construction build decks porches houses all that jazz we um i use a ton of that product yeah so uh they uh they jumped in with us um we got the Mer great american ranch on there we got virginia rail guys um which is uh my buddy brandon he he made the the hammers the vao hammers oh very nice oh yeah yep yeah. You got yours nearby, Josh? Is yours? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, oh, I got it right here. You right arrogant now. prick. I knew it was going <laughs> to be right around. Well, they were laying in his bed. Oh, that's right. I, I, just I actually sleep this like this. <laughs> <laughs> you got two of them over, don't you? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <sighs> I actually sleep like, like this. <laughs> It's awesome. I should have. I knew when I asked, he had him sitting by his feet. <laughs> we also got uh, Ronnie and Company. He's a uh, he is a real estate agent, and so we got got him on there as well. Um, and Titter Mary Law um, got a lawyer on there too. Um, oh, good. look at you! But between between um, me and Wayne, we know a lot of people, and Wayne's been on the grind. And we've been uh. We've been grinding together as a team, man. So, getting it out there. So, so it's funny you, you mentioned a law group. It's actually pretty smart. I'd say with our group, with, with the community we're in, it's probably a pretty good one to be sponsoring. On my way up to Conquest Hill, I got that speed ticket, and um, 
I'm not going to go into many more details, but I'm looking at a misdemeanor charge tacked on with that. I'm having to pay a law group in that county right now to get me out of. Uh, oh, man. It was some BS, you know, but uh, hey, if your license expires, go get a new one. I'm just, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it is a misdemeanor in the state of Virginia. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, last topic I always like to end with. And, you know, Dan, you and I, are almost, I think you're just slightly longer in the game than I am from a pulling standpoint. Josh, I'm not sure how many years you've been in it, but regardless whether you're new or been in it a long time, um, we all can give advice to new pullers. And um, I would like for you know, each of y'all talk about what advice you would give a new puller, male, female, young, old. Um, as you can see, you know, I'm no spring chicken, just got started in it at 35, 36 years old. What advice would you give a, a new puller coming into the sport? Uh, for me, it would be, uh, Dan, take take a break. Take take time off. You don't have to go to practice every week. It's Treat it like a strength sport. Take Do your deload week. Take, your, take breaks. If stuff hurts. Stop. That's the biggest thing I've learned. I uh, coming up going to stands every week when I first started. I actually uh, got bicep tendonitis in both biceps really mm. bad, and I've been babying it for like five years now. So uh, take your time off, take it serious. Dan, what, what, what advice would you give, bud? Dude, that's that's legit dead on right there. You just um, have to follow it. Gotcha. Yeah, so I mean, I would say the same thing for really. I mean, get in, get in there, take it slow. Doing the game, take it slow. Don't be, you know, pulling for three hours straight and all this. But um, also, touch as many hands as possible. Yeah. And go to as many tournaments as you can and get them ready goes because I think that'll kind of like that's going to progress you faster, but just don't, like he said, when you start to feel the pain, stop, just stop. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I, you know, I always say you can, uh, what was I say? You can work through discomfort, stop at pain. You know what I mean? That's kind of, you know, what I learned just lifting is a and strength sport. You know what I mean? I live, I've lifted my whole life and it's like, you, you work through discomfort. A lot of times you can work those little aches out, but if something truly hurts, kill it for a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, but fellas, I appreciate. It. I think we're gonna probably see each other a lot over the next few months. Um, yes, I think if Warner Mountain Two happens in West Virginia, I'm not sure if both y'all gonna be on that card. I think Dan, I heard you were. Um, if it I don't know. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Not sure yet. I know there was talk about it. I, I, I heard mumbles of a, a potential match with you, but I, I won't go into much detail because I know right now nothing's set in stone with Warner Mountain Two, but um. Um, that, that's in the June, July 26th, yeah. 27th, something like that. In the July, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, fellas, I want to appreciate y'all's time. It's Friday night. So I hope Stan Walku is uh, jealous that y'all got to spend Friday night with me. And not, um, so eat your heart out, Stan. Uh, but seriously, fellas, I appreciate y'all's time. It's been a pleasure getting to become friends with y'all in the last several months. And I look forward to war and all the other events coming up. Um, yes, sir. Y'all have a great weekend, and um, I'll talk to y'all later this week. You as well. Thanks for having us. Thank